This is CBS News. Shock and sorrow mingle on Marshall University campus following death and plane crash of most of school's football team. Dimensions of the disaster, the reports indicate there may be too few survivors in East Pakistan to bury the dead. Devious war, report from Jed Duval in Saigon on enemy booby traps, and Vice President Key comes to the U.S. today. Top stories of the hour on CBS Radio. Good morning, this is Steve Young, CBS News. Shock and sorrow have descended upon the town of Huntington, West Virginia, following the crash of a Southern Airways DC-9 jet, which took the lives of 73 people, including 48 players, staff, and coaches of the Marshall University football team. Tony Sargent has a report. A dreary autumn morning fits the mood of the Marshall University campus. Nowhere does one see any smiles. The sorrow of last night's disaster has exhausted students and officials. This morning, there is a quiet pause here as this university of 8,500 students tries to decide what happens next. A university spokesman says the main job is contacting and helping parents and friends of the victims who want to come here to Huntington to be near the bodies of those who died last night. Reportedly, the crash was of such violence that most victims will be difficult or impossible to identify in the armory that police are using as a morgue near the airport. There will be a memorial service here on campus this evening. But for now, except for official meetings, this campus appears to have entered a period of exhausted sleep. Tony Sargent, CBS News in Huntington, West Virginia. This is Richard C. Hottle at CBS News. West Virginia State Police have now recovered 56 bodies from the wreck of a chartered airliner which crashed near Huntington last night with 74 people aboard, including 38 members of the Marshall University football team, 8 athletic staff members, and 28 other passengers and crew. Federal Aviation Administration investigators have found intact the DC-9's flight recorder and onboard tapes of the crew's radio conversations and may be able to figure out why the plane, with an experienced pilot at the controls, should have crashed into a hillside just short of the runway on its landing approach. The plane, coming down in light rain and fog, apparently clipped the top of one hill in its path, then pancaked into another. The accident, the worst domestic air tragedy of the year, is also the worst involving American athletic teams. This flight, a round trip to Greenville, North Carolina, was the first time the Marshall team had flown to a game this season. On all previous games, it had gone by bus. Tony Sargent of CBS News at the Marshall campus reports that this dreary autumn morning fits the mood. A memorial service will be held this evening, but for now, except for official meetings, the campus appears to have entered a period of exhausted sleep. This is CBS News. Fatal plane crash, 73 dead, including Marshall University football team. Details from Barry Serafin. Increased war activity, at least 44 U.S. fatalities during past week's fighting. Political arrests, Cambodian government charges four family members of former chief of state with subversion and report on oil slick threatening three states. Details of those and other top stories of the hour on CBS Radio. Good morning, this is Steve Young, CBS News. Officials of the Federal Aviation Agency have recovered intact the flight recorder and voice recorder from the Southern Airways DC-9 jet, which crashed and burned last night in what one witness called a giant ball of fire. Barry Serafin reports the latest from Huntington, West Virginia. Shock and disbelief are expressed everywhere here following what is believed to be this country's worst air disaster of the year and its worst ever involving a group of athletes. 38 Marshall University football players were among the 73 people believed aboard the chartered Southern Airways DC-9 when it crashed into a hillside just short of the airport runway. Witnesses say the plane hit the top of another ridge before plummeting down in flames. One said she saw a part fall off before the plane hit. Authorities worked through the night combing the debris for bodies. Federal investigators are to inspect the wreckage today. This was the first time this season the Marshall team had flown to a game. On all previous games, they had gone by bus. Memorial services have been scheduled on the campus, and special housing has been set up for the families of the victims of the tragic crash. Barry Serafin, CBS News, Huntington, West Virginia. When word of the disaster reached the Marshall campus, a co-ed and girlfriend of one of the players was heard to say, it can't be, it can't be. 
It's unbelievable, said a student with seven fraternity brothers aboard the plane. An 18-year-old defensive tackle on the freshman team who had looked forward to playing next year said, I lived with them, knew them, and played with them. Now they're gone. 